My dear friends, have you ever wondered how effective hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose was in endothelial protection while performing FACO in heart cataracts? So let's look at some basics. The ocular viscosurgical devices have four properties, which is viscosity, pseudoplasticity, elasticity, and coatability. The viscosity indicates how viscous the substance is. The pseudoplasticity is the ability of a substance to change its viscosity based on shear forces. Elasticity is the ability to expand the anterior chamber. And coatability depends upon the surface tension and the ability to coat the endothelium. Based on these properties, the OVDs are divided into the cohesive ones, the sodium hyaluronate, which have high elasticity or space maintenance and low coatability and dispersive ones which have high coatability but less space maintenance and finally viscoadaptive that have properties of both these include helon 5. The cohesive viscoelastics are long chain molecules like spaghetti they help to maintain space but they have low coatability and because they are long chain they are easy to remove. The dispersive OVDs on the other hand are short chain molecules like macaroni hence they have poor space maintenance but a very high coatability and they are more difficult to remove. Now hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose is considered by many to be not a real OVD because it is not pseudoplastic. It is made of wood pulp and hence it is extremely cheap. It is made of small chain molecules like dispersive OVDs. It has moderate space maintenance ability or elasticity. Hence HPMC lies between the true cohesive and dispersive OVDs. Space maintenance is better than chondroitin sulfate but lesser than sodium hyaluronate and its endothelial coating is better than sodium hyaluronate but much lesser than chondroitin sulfate. I use HPMC in 99% of my cases. I use Viscoat or Orocoat which is a combination of cohesive and dispersive viscoelastic only in intumescent cataracts and in hard cataracts. From soft cataracts to grade 3 nucleosclerotic cataracts, I have been using HPMC and getting clear corneas. In this video, I will be using it in a grade 4 nucleosclerotic cataract to see how effective it is as an endothelial protecting agent. So this is a cataract which has a grade 4 nucleosclerosis. In this case, I am going to primarily use only hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose throughout the procedure and then look at the post-operative results to see how clear the cornea is on the first post-operative day. I fashion the clear corneal incision, wash out the tripen blue and fill the chamber with methyl cellulose and also coat the surface of the epithelium with methyl cellulose because it prevents drying of the epithelium. The capsular excess is then fashioned with the cystitome. And I try to aim for a 5.5 to 5.75 millimeter capsular excess. At the end of capsular excess, the flap is washed out and hydro dissection is performed as effectively as possible to ensure that this nucleus will freely rotate and not give any stress on the zonules while performing the rotation. I then fill the chamber with methyl cellulose and also check for rotation. And now I am ready to go with phaco emulsification. So I am using a Stellaris machine in this case. I am using a 20 gauge microflow 30 degree tip. I am going to use the technique of direct chop in order to disassemble this nucleus. So after burying the phaco tip, I initiate the crack and I separate the fragment. The power that I am using is only 50% and I am using the multiburst mode with a burst duration of 30 milliseconds and a duty cycle of 70%. So once I break the nucleus down into smaller fragments, I mobilize these fragments and please note that I am emulsifying this at the level of the supracapsular plane in the safe zone of the eye. This concept of the safe zone is that you emulsify the nuclear fragments in the middle of the eye 
where the dome of the cornea, corneal endothelium is as far away from the phaco probe as possible. The second important step that you have to note is that you have to apply phaco emulsification only after the tip has been completely occluded by the nuclear piece. This will ensure that the cavitational energy is delivered only into the nucleus fragment and is not dissipated to reach the corneal endothelium. So this is an unedited video of the procedure being performed. So I impale the phaco tip, create the crack, separate the fragments by simply rotating one fragment away from the other and then I emulsify this nucleus fragment in the safe zone of the eye. You can see every time I come to the center, I very cautiously apply the burst mode phaco because if you press the foot pedal in position 3 to only midpoint then the bursts are separated far away from each other. It's only when you press the foot pedal much deeper that the bursts come much closer and the cavitational energy is more. So you can control the amount of cavitational energy delivered in the multi-burst mode. So the entire nucleus has now been safely removed from the eye. The cortical cleavage hydrodissection was good which means that there is almost no residual cortex left behind at the end of the procedure. The capsular bag is extremely clean. A hydrophilic acrylic intraocular lens is then implanted within the capsular bag. So the methyl cellulose acts between a cohesive and a dispersive viscoelastic. It has properties of both. It is a short chain molecule and therefore you need to spend a little time to remove it. It is not so easy to remove as a cohesive viscoelastic which will come out in toto because they are long chain molecules and they all cling to each other. So I usually spend about a minute or two in order to clean up all the viscoelastic or methyl cellulose. You have to spend a little more time in removing dispersive viscoelastics because they tend to cling more to the endothelium than the hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose. So this completes the procedure. So with the butt compression technique, I'm able to close the wound. And of course, the most important thing is to now look at the cornea at the first post-operative day. You can see that the cornea is extremely clear. There is not even the sign of the slightest striate keratopathy. You can clearly make out the pattern of the iris. And there is no flare or cells. So in conclusion, we could say that hydroxypropyl beta and cellulose, when combined with the proper phaco technique, will give you clear corneas and you do not have to go for expensive OBDs in order to achieve the same effect. I thank you for your attention.